I'm John Batchelor, Gordon Chang, my colleague and co-host, Forbes.com is here with me, and we're off to China. Gordon, Beihai. Beihai is a city in China. It is also an illustration of the catastrophe of the overbuilding in China these last years. We're joined now by Anne Stevenson Yang, co-founder of J Capital Research. She is in Beihai, China. She's the author of China Alone, the emergence from and potential return to isolation. And a very good morning to you. I hear from your anecdote that you are in a poorly built and overbuilt and troubled city of Beihai, that there is a drug problem in Beihai in addition to the bad loans and the uh, poor morale. So I introduce my audience to Ann Stevenson Yang introducing America to Breaking Bad Beihai. Where is Beihai and what has happened? Good morning to you, Ann. Good morning. So Beihai is down near the Vietnamese border. It's uh, it's west of Guangdong province in Guangxi province. And um, it's a place that's been contending to build a big oil port because uh, China has, has very big contracts with Angola. The Angola oil is shipped up from Africa and hits uh, at the southern ports in China. And Beihai wants to, be, uh, wants to have one of those big ports to process oil. Um, it hasn't really done it yet, but it's uh, pitching to do that. They had a huge real estate bubble here back in the late 1990s, uh, which exploded, sending land prices from $500,000 per mu, which is the Chinese measure, about one-sixth of an acre, down to about $8,000 per mu. Um, and they claim it's not going to happen again, but from what I can see from this window, it's happening. And Anne, it seems like there's some overbuilding. You were mentioning that there is what, 400,000 or 100,000 new apartment units in a city of 400,000? That's right, and that was just in the district where we were yesterday. Today I'm in a new district, and it's just phenomenal. There, um, uh, the, the agent just told me there are about 200 new real estate developments here. Each development, the one I'm in right now, I'm standing in the model apartment of a construction shell. Um, and this this one has uh, 5,600 units in it. Um, so, you know, multiply that out across 200 developments, and that's quite a stunning amount of extra inventory. And when you think about the general numbers across China, the National Bureau of Statistics reported that in January and February, which were aggregated to eliminate the distortion caused by the Lunar New Year holiday, construction starts across China were down a stunning 27.4% against the same period in 2013. It, it seems to me that the real estate bubble is just at the inflection point and has started to turn down. Puzzle, Anne. 5,600 units in this complex, are they empty, 5,600 units? Oh, well, they haven't been built yet, but the um, they've started to sell, and there are an awful lot of people in the sales office looking. The bubble has not burst down here, but what you get here, it's very interesting. You get these groups of buyers who form group corporations and all contribute capital, and they come from the north. They buy groups of apartments. They say in the sales office their, their average sale is 10 units at a time, and these groups buy the 10 units, and then they go home and sell shares to other people. They may be timeshares, or they may actually just be Ponzi's. It's hard to know. One agent said they are Ponzi's. Are, is there someone l meant to live in these apartments, or are these the investment strategy Gordon's taught me? You know, this is a it's a it's a port, and so it makes an argument that it's a, a tourist town, and so the idea is that people will come and vacation here. It doesn't actually have a holiday trade now because it's very. You know, the, 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 the water is actually too polluted to swim, and they don't allow swimming. Um, most of the waterfront is uh, roped off, and there's barbed wire because it's, um, you know, it's an oil port. It's quite a dirty place. It has its own seedy charm, but I keep thinking of death in Venice. Okay, and this is that you can't make this stuff up. So, you know, essentially what you've got are people buying apartments because they've got a lot of cash. They have no place else to put it because the banking system and is they can't just get it out of the country. And you know, it's hard to get it out of the country. So the question is, 
are there people to live in this stuff? You know, when I went to my hometown, which is Rugo in Jiangsu province, you know, it's the same thing. You see miles and miles and miles of apartment buildings, 20 stories tall, completely vacant. And I'm sure, you know, a lot of them have been sold. But the question is, as one elderly man said to my wife, where are all the people going to come from? That's right. I mean, there absolutely won't be people coming to them. Um, and the, the interesting thing is that there's no secondary market at all. Um, so people talk about how there's price appreciation, but it's totally, um, you know, it's notional because there's nobody actually buying the secondhand units. It's just people speculating and holding um, and getting money out. I mean, that's a very interesting issue because I'm sure you've seen that we've had some renminbi depreciation this week, which means that uh, you're going to get get uh, fewer dollars for your renminbi. So more people are concerned about getting their dollars now instead of waiting and seeing whether the renminbi depreciates more. And there's a photograph on the cover of your book, China Alone, of uh, a what looks to be a housing project concrete slabs on top of concrete slabs it's not finished it doesn't look like anybody will ever live there but i guess this is uh, this is investment strategy is this what high high bay looks like uh, the cover of your book they high yeah i mean I, I took that photo with my cell phone and uh you know, i can't even remember which city it is because i've been to so many um, and every one of them, that, that's why why construction uh, industry has gone gangbusters and driven the GDP over the last few years, cement and steel, because they've been building these shells. It's, it's really tragic because many of these cities would be quite nice, except the, the you know perfectly reasonable small homes have been raised to build these huge cement hulking shells. Now, I promised Breaking Bad, Bay High. What have you heard about the crystal meth in southern China? You know, I really don't know anything about it, but a cab driver told us that it's very common, uh, that everybody seems to, to do it, that people don't know what to do with their money, and as they've gotten richer from selling their land, they've, all, they've taken to uh, crystal meth. There was a, a whole village in Guangdong just a couple months ago that was busted for uh, manufacturing crystal meth, and the, the police seized, get this, three tons of finished project product and 30 tons of precursor. So just imagine uh, how big that business was. I have to tell you, Anne and Gordon, I say, I wouldn't trust this information if it hadn't come from a cab driver. <laughs> it's the only way you could possibly get uh, transparency with crystal meth. So what we're talking about is an illicit drug trade that is underneath the prosperity. It's and, and also in that part of China, a little bit over to the west, you have a lot of heroin because it comes across the border. And so you have all of these drugs now starting to penetrate Chinese society. And this is, you know, this is one problem, but it's one problem on top of so many others, John. Gordon, don't they execute drug lords in China? There's, it's not like a federal process, is it? Right. It's, they execute people over the minor crimes, John, and certainly drug trafficking. If you're not connected, you know, and if they want your organs, yeah, of course they'll execute you. And a detail here, you're in one city that has dreams. Let's say it's aspirational. Maybe they're a little older now, they're a little tawdry, but they have dreams. Does this city live in denial? Do they have a case to make for themselves that people believe? Or is this the duty of the mayor and the developers to just keep telling this story, knowing the money will keep pouring in, knowing that nothing ever really will change? You know, it's it, it's a little of both. I mean, it, it does feel like a nation where that's been seized by a, 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 a type of mass hysteria, where the world is shutting their eyes and imagining this future when they'll all live in, you know, Western European cities. It seems to me so often that the that the real Chinese dream is to be somewhere else. I've been in, in a city that replicated Niagara Falls, one that had a little Paris. I've been in three little Manhattans, uh, a little, you know, British town on the Thames. It just seems like replicating international cities and international uh, natural wonders 
is something that China does because people are imagining that they'll be able to live like that, and if they can't live there, they'd rather replicate those environments here. And Stevenson Yang, the author of China Alone, The Emergence From and Potential Return to Isolation. Gordon Chang of Forbes.com, and we say good morning to Breaking Bad Beha. I'm John Batchelor.